a new feature is the event emitter. Basically, event emitter allows you to add additional information to the chat or append content to the chat. There are two types. Type 1, the status. Type 2 is message. I put event emitter, a type status, and when it's uh, when this event emitter acts, the message that it will send is I'm retrieving information. This is the status, right? Don't forget to give us likes, leave your comments, share us to your friends, and also subscribe to our channels. We have YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Facebook. All right, now on to the third topic, tools and functions. This is going to be a very difficult, um, not very difficult, like relatively difficult um, topic, but I'm, I'll do my best to explain it to you guys. So, oh, what I found out is that the documentation of Open Web UI has got an improvement as well. It makes more sense, uh, or I can understand the purpose of tool and functions better. And from its website, tools can extend the abilities of the AI or the LLM. The AI will use tools to get information, and once it gets information, it will form the response back to the user. And the use case is when you ask an AI uh, about the weather forecast or flight status, if you equip it with the tool to reach to a um, uh, some API call that gets back the um, weather, then the LLM will use that response to re uh, and then reply it to you, right? So essentially, tool is for the AI to use. Okay, now functions, it's supposed to extend the ability of open web UI itself. Um, like function, uh, well, typo here, a function will manage process of open web UI. And if you remember, one of the functions uh, supporting type is filters. Uh, when you type into the box and submit it to open web UI, you can have inlet functions to screen through or manage or edit um, the flow. So basically, functions are something that will control and enhance the work process of Open Web UI. A new feature that has been introduced lately is the event emitter. Basically, event emitter allows you to add additional information to the chat and or append content to the chat, append some message to the chat, but at, um, event emitter cannot strip it. So it can only add um, text to the app, to, to the chat. There are two types. Um, type one is going to be about the status. A status will show in the user interface um, where the LLM is right now. So it's actually good for user experience so that um, he or she will know that, okay, the LLM is working. It's working its way to get the answer for you. That's type one status. Type two is message. This is going to be a message that will be added to the chat interface. So all in all, it's an event emitter that you can implement it in functions. So let me just, um, actually it can also be implemented into tools. Right now, maybe you are not having a good sense of what this event emitter is. So we will go to a demo. Oops, okay, as usual, Tools is located in the admin panel. And actually, no, it's located in workspace. And this, on the top, you have tools here. You can click add tool, your new tool here. Give it name, test tool or something like that, and give it a good description. But what I want to show you here is the uh, product information, actually. Product information is a tool the AI will call this tool when it was asked, it will be asked about anything about product. So the code is actually, oh, I don't have a code here. Actually, yeah, this one. So the boilerplate for the tool is class tools, right? And if you remember correctly, for tools, you can also have valves as well, um, but I haven't done it here. Um, you can do it. Um, you can go back to my previous videos about tools and learn how you can make valves here. So the functions inside this tool, I have only one function. This one is get product information. 
and you need you you should give it a good description because the AI will need to know what this tool is for. So a more descriptive uh, information about that tool, the better it will understand. So this tool is going to it will just do one thing: get information of products we are selling. This is a situation. Let's say that you are a coffee shop or something like that, and you want to equip a tool for the AI to pull um, product information before it can answer to the user, right? Now, don't worry about this just yet. But basically, I have a preset product information. So when this function gets called, a product info is this uh, string, and I will return that. So in a normal world, I don't need this section. I don't need this section at all. And I don't need this guy. Previously, I don't need that. I don't do that. It doesn't really, it, it didn't even, uh, it's not, it wasn't even possible because even emitter was not there. But what I did here is I put event emitter, a type status, and when it's, uh, when this event emitter acts, the message that it will send is I'm retrieving information. And because it's a uh, status, you need to provide done condition as well. Because it's just the starting uh, of this function, I put done to be false. Okay, now I follow it with await. This type is a message type. If you remember, where is it? There are two types of event emitters, the status and the message. So the message will be the one that push information into the user interface as, as a message too. So this guy is going to write something like, all right, hang on tight. Okay, now when this one got executed, we come to this one right away um, and I force it to sleep for two seconds so that you can see the effect. Maybe I will add it here too. Two seconds and then you get the product. And now the product, let's say that it's going to be done, right? Um, very quickly because this is a preset. It doesn't really get loaded anywhere from the internet. And this one got is going to get triggered that the status is done now with a message, I finished retrieving information. And this function returns the product information right here. Okay. Um, everything is put into a try and accept clause. So I catch the event when error happened. All right. So what I will do here is I will copy this whole piece of code. And I am going to change that. Okay, I paste it and I click save and everything if everything goes right, the tool is now updated successfully is here vowels no vowels. Now, where do we use it? When do you want to use a tool, you need to enable it, right? If you are not e equipping it with a model, you need to enable it. So let's say what product do you sell? I finished retrieving information. That's really quick. Oh, it didn't really even break. Actually, let, let me try it again, but I deactivate this guy first so that it doesn't confound with what we are doing. Let's regenerate this guy again. Come to this page. You will make sure that you enable the tool here. And then you can, I finished retrieving information. All right, hang on tight. You see, we sell this, this much. Now, I think what is missing is, what is missing is, um, this is not printed somehow. This might not be working properly. So anyway, you can play with it. Let's say if I extend it to five seconds, what is going to happen? Refresh, it's going to be the act, um, reactivate the products uh, tool. Hmm. Okay, it's really fast, and but still, you, you get to see this. I finished retrieving information, and this is the status, right? If you recall correctly, the status is here, status, right? And all right, hang on tight is actually a part of the message because when you, uh, if you copy it 
and you paste it somewhere here. It's actually a part of a return message. So pretty much, if you use event emitter as a status, it's going to show uh, it's going to show the status right here. And you see that uh, it's a little bit grayed out compared to the actual answer. But if you use a message type here, you are going to insert that text right into the response box as well. So this is about tools and event emitter.